Ladies and gentlemen, today we are looking at Renzaru beating every single Easter egg in 24 Can hours. This is insane. Shout out to him. Right, lads, he let me react to this. Today. I want to see this. Easter eggs we need to complete 50! To all the way to Black Ops 3. And while some of these are quite easy, or 15! Oh, really pushed us to our limits. This had to have been 15. <laughs> yeah. The Shang. The reason I didn't include Black Ops rough. War and Cold War is because I'm pretty sure if we did that, it would actually make this challenge impossible. So the only other human, level, I mean. the only other human being I know that has done every single Easter egg is Codename Pizza. And I was there and it took him over one whole stream to do pretty much every single Easter egg. And so nobody has done World at War to Black Ops, Cold War, or Vanguard. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Yeah. This video was already a struggle, so you know, including Black Ops 4 and Cold War, I'd be like, I mean, that would be a whole other day. day. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> it's 6 30 and it ends at That'd be another whole the day. day. There's no yeah. stopping the timer for breaks or anything like that, so this is going to be a test of endurance. However, I knew going into this, I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. You know, I'm just a man, a mortal. I mean, so you I need more, th more than one where player. Where the good men had gone and yes. where were all the gods? Where are the homies? You know, where was the streetwise Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> okay, hero. This man needs a hero right now. Who's coming in, bro? He could have ran the solo Easter egg mod for BO3. There's Renzaru. What's up? Peaceful zombie. Hey, let's go. 42 towns on Origins. That's me. Mew Munchy Muncher. Hey. With my team assembles, we were ready this is to good. He's got a run, team of four. Our first Easter egg, Doris. Uh, As we waited for the time, bro, to it's gonna take like we four seconds. Looking forward to doing this challenge. However, at the same time, we were kind of nervous for what maps were to come. Realistically, you know, yeah, we'll later on it'll be hard. Mini Easter egg out the way, you know, so we can actually move on to the real me. I mean, right. the Reese, this should be easy. Like five minutes in and out job, it wasn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Lads, it's a pack a punch gun. Are you joking me? Oh, oh my God. no, so, bro. <laughs> To finish Doris. I honestly forgot how no hard way. War can be at times with yeah. mechanics, but it's hard to get worry, points on this game. 18 minutes, we finally had a pack a bunch gun. Wow, could start on the Easter egg. That's From crazy. Here on out, it was pretty simple. You know, you just shoot the yep. panel outside the map and then shoot get the that panel. The map. To be completely yep. honest with you, yeah, we probably took longer on this step than we should have because that's just not map, right. Familiar with the wall to wall fly trap, you know. They honestly, you could have just done it on the giant and BO3 and called it a day. They you know, you really could have done that. Up three, but you know, after 20 minutes, we'd shot all the toys and get the monkey the first Easter yeah. egg in Call of enjoy Duty. nothing that's so a reward an embarrassing start on Doris. we were ready to redeem ourselves and really get into the beat of this video we yes finally managed to get the piece of now ascension and we were ready to get through these black ops one easter yeah. eggs so obviously we're going to be starting with ascension and with this being the first main easter egg it's honestly not as difficult compared to easter eggs you'll see later it's on not that bad basically all yeah. we need to do is just get lucky with our box it's the box and, you know, lush for most of bo1 so let's yeah. go ahead and see how our run's looking so far Oh, okay. <laughs> error disconnected. Yeah, you can't go into the menus, bro, in a co op game. Every possibility. <laughs> Look at the zombie. Game crash. Yeah, My man walking in place, bro. Oh, yeah. I don't know that. Quick that the dual wheel CZs Some plutonium stuff. Could be the devil throughout Black Ops 1. And honestly, uh, we end up avoiding it like the play. That's a plutonium bug then, for sure. So much anxiety when hitting the box. You get so Whenever many CZs. I, the box, I would always be scared. That I'll just brainlessly pick it up throughout any of and then just but lose it. it yeah, probably better to learn this early on in the run instead of like really okay. So that's a plutonium yeah, really glitch. Back, that's not a regular. And we didn't get thing. awful look at the start. We actually got Gersh's quite hey, early. Hey, let's go. At the machine, yeah, you there. need that first. Honestly, so far, so good. We just, just like Moon, get some good weapons, and we could actually be off this map pretty quick. On the yeah. first monkey round, we also got the button step completed. Yeah, the button step's that, fun on four player. The pad near the rocket, and then the ballistic knife clock. The next step did cause us a few issues as we had to redo the step. The loon. While taking the yeah. Landers, the last letter just didn't get picked up. Yeah, you so have to spell Luna in the sky. Overall, the run was actually going pretty well until yeah. the final step. Here we go, boys. Oh, this step sucks. Yeah, I know I it can be so glitchy. It probably is super glitchy on Plutonium. Yeah, he also it. didn't throw the Gersh on the right it's spot, so I know that this is not going to work. It's not going to work. You have to be so precise with this. Every time I've done it, yeah, you have to be so precise. Yeah, yeah I need Ray Gun. Everything. And then we get a new piece of equipment and we'd retry it. And we end up failing the step five times oh yeah I think at this point we knew that we all needed to have the it ray needs guns, and everything we tried every single ray gun every time trick and it <laughs> but finally an hour and 30 minutes into this entire you got 
it. I finally got the ray gun, and let's just yes, say sir. I was a bit too excited. I'm ready to max ammo. Oh, I got the ray gun! I'm the <laughs> 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 See, on BO1, you only get this type of experience. Not on any other COD Zombies so, game. So, yeah, let's just move on from that. Tyler also got the ray gun after me, so we will finally yeah. to complete this egg. Work. To beat it, a lot of people don't know. You need probably at minimum two ray guns, one upgraded thunder gun, Gersh device, and Matryoshka dolls. And that is why you've never seen a step like this ever again in Call of Duty Zombies. Because this is a for doozy for sure. Maybe for all. I don't think he threw the Gersh correctly. Once he throws this one, then it'll work. Yeah, it, it's very precise as well. It's like literally one white pixel on the floor that you just have to keep spamming. Wait, and there he did it! Yeah, it's rising! Yay! Wait, connection interrupted? Oh, oh. And ended the game immediately jumping onto our next map. Oh, I thought they died. I thought they lagged out there. Now, if you've seen anything cool to call it on fun. this channel, I don't really have the best experience playing this map, especially when it comes to the Easter, Easter egg's not too bad. From how fast can you pack punch on every zombie's map, one of his videos. What? What? I've what never seen happened? that. What I'm. So I've know, never so seen that. This map, and I what? Think realizing how long it took us on the Bro, that's like a one in a billion. How long this actually take? No, but call the dead's easy. Challenge, so we not as bad as essential. So they're at an hour. Not too bad for two. So they're at an hour. Not too bad for two. Anybody have as much experience doing Easter egg as me? But beside that, it went relatively smoothly. The first few steps, like finding the fuse, find the fuse, yeah, finding the vodka bottle, were pretty simple. We had no issues completing these. Where our first challenge occurs is with the dial step in the lighthouse. Ah. Right about how this step makes no goddamn sense. Also Unless you figure out a way to input it correctly the exact first time, they probably just watched a bad guide because on the Call of the Dead remaster, you can do this dial step incredibly quickly. It just depends on how this step makes absolutely no sense you to me. Know so it. I'm just gonna let Code Dame Pizza take it away and explain the step to you. It, it's hard. That's right. <laughs> Too much nonsense. Turn it. Once you know how many times you would have to turn it to get to the number four, make your way to the third floor where the orange dial is and turn the orange dial that many times. Then while you're still there, okay, listen, I love my zombie YouTubers, right? But like, everybody just doesn't care about Easter egg steps and the mechanics. They all care about how to do it in the fastest, simplistic way possible. Right, and that is why I want to redo every single Easter egg. I'm gonna ma be making Easter egg tutorials later on this year during September when I'm gone in Egypt, and I'm gonna be making every single Easter egg tutorial extremely simplistic because I know for casuals when they listen to this, it's a nightmare. Look how many more times you have to turn that dial to get to the number seven. I can't even imagine what they're thinking. Uh, see, if you're a common zombies player, you look at this and you're like, ah, oh, this is just another Wednesday, you know? But like, any other person that's never played Call of Duty, you're like, what is this? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Two, but I mean, four, this is the hardest step. Actually, what is this? It's we the hardest step. It's in some random order. It genuinely yeah. doesn't make any sense. But, you know, I it doesn't make sense. He said the yeah. step originally, but I ended up redoing it for him as he didn't do it. I'm right. going to be honest. Yeah, if you mess up the step, like he said, restart your game. Because you literally have to, f you're going to spend hours figuring this out and trying to get it to hit the exact right number. It's. You literally do it right the first time or literally just reset. I'm yeah, telling you. Time. But you know, boys, in the end, we finally got it. The next yeah. step was a radio step. That was pretty straightforward. And then the, the radio step, step super easy. Well. And the fog And you know, typical yep. with these runs, all good things come to an end. And the end was actually our Getting the we VR11. We spent ages yep. trying to get the VR11. And yep. that seems to be the ongoing trend with these runs. It always kind of seems to be the mystery box that screws us over. But once we finally... It's not too bad. I mean, round 15. To finish this Easter that's not too, too bad. We shot to get the VR11 man and blast him with all we have. He's got my man, you're what you're taking him out with the M1911 on upgraded. That's not gonna do a single point of damage. <laughs> Gave it to the boys inside the door. Now for us to uh, get yes. completed, we wanted to get the Wonder Wolf. And there's yes, about to see this clip here. We just Gotta about barely it. got it before we ended up dying. No. Oh, lovely. Oh, no, nope, that, that counts. That counts. No, that's W. Nope, that counts. That counts. Easter egg completed. 
Each strike completed. This ain't no call to that BL3. Each strike completed. We did it! We did it! Yeah. 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 And he again, that's another egg done. So far, yeah. it's only taken us three Not too hours. bad. It's definitely longer than what we've expected. Three hours for three eggs? I mean, that's so pretty good. going on to Shangri-La now, I knew that this one was oh. going to be a struggle. As other I'm guessing two hours here, because this first step, knowing the team's coordination here. <laughs> yeah. Shang's Easter strike is one of the hardest co-op Easter eggs ever. It, and it's also on one of the hardest maps ever. So, me, our team basically had no I love this map though. Doing this. For the so Easter egg, it's so much fun. Scanning through the no nonsense guide, I had this yep. Easter egg memorized like it was the back of my hands. And with knowing all the steps, I also knew all of the trouble that came. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. The Easter egg starts off simple enough. You just go ahead, turn on the power, yep. enter into a clip mode, press this random button on the wall, do and some you go dials on the floor, on the floor yep. side of the map. And with a bit of explaining to my team, we had this step completed by the three hours and six minute mark. Okay, not too bad. Do clips to do next step which was also super easy as all you had to do was have three players stand at the bottom yep. of the water and go down the water slide down the water slide get the switch, switch. Yep. so far so good honestly i'm surprised we haven't run into that much trouble just kidding this is actually where we started panicking as we had to rely on box luck again for this the box luck and the napalm is what's hell on this because you can use the napalm for two steps in this or one step and you can either wait like till round 20 to get one and if somebody accidentally blows up the napalm Terrible step, Next man. Step, this is the worst step of shame. JGB215. Yes, honestly, sir. my opinion seems to be the most rare wonder weapon to get out of the box. It is. It is. Map, we got it really. apart, apart from the Rega Mark II, and they got it really fast. Okay. <laughs> Try doing Shangri-La round 100, my guy. Fast. Uh, I got the baby maker. No way. Honestly, I think with four players, right, it's easier. It finally seemed like our box you have more better, of a chance. We got the 3179 JGB215 really quick, which is Let's good go. as it means that we can move on to the next step right away. Although we got some pretty good luck here, I'm honestly getting a bad feeling though, as I don't really see this luck keeping up for too long. Either nope. way, we went back into the Eclipse mode, shot the crystal down with 3179 JGB215, and followed it through the Geist. I love the steps in this map. They're so now, much fun. For the record, this next step is actually one of the worst steps I've ever seen in a Core Zombie. Oh, map. yeah, it's horrible. Essentially, for this step, you need to release four gas pipes around the map and lead a yep. napalm through them all while in eclipse mode and now yep. obviously with shangri-la being one of the most close and if you run out of time you have to do it again and if you accidentally blow up the napalm you have to do it again like you can fail this easter egg so fast because you might just keep failing this step you know in all of cool duty zombies history this is going to make the step a massive pain in the it is horrid However, surprisingly it went pretty well we had matt yeah. training a zombie while i let the napalm down yeah if you have a good team it'll go well pretty quick yep they got they got put now I yeah did yeah, 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 I heard the quote, I heard the quote. We then went ahead and bought the spike moors and took them over to the waterfall nice. to plug up the holes in the wall. Yeah, the easy step. Getting the step done pretty quickly, and then we actually went ahead and broke the rules, lads, by pressing the do not press button. Then we go on to the next I, I, I th Don't you have to do that for the Easter egg? I'm pretty sure you literally have to. Step. This step yeah. should be the most easy thing in the entire <laughs> world. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to go into the mid pit, and you have to set There's the dials four dials. The correct yeah. numbers, these being 16, 4, 3, and 1. However, yeah. some Something went wrong in our games, and for some reason, the dials just were not entering properly. And oh, what the heck? Okay, this must be a plutonium bug, because I just saw that, where it's like diagonal. You see out here, it's like a cross where each of the symbols are perfect. The fact that that went diagonal, they, they might have glitched this we step. We spent a solid 40 minutes oh, going in and out no. of Eclipse mode, trying anything we could. Maybe, just maybe, to get the game to magically oh, start. Also, there is a step here that a lot of people have not included on Shangri-La, where you have to go on the other side and break something with a grenade outside of the map. That might be what they're stuck on, but we'll have not to working. see. And then we started thinking to ourselves, maybe we just missed a step. And we yes. watched every single YouTuber's guide on this egg. I yeah. mean, everyone. Yeah. Mr. Ruffle Waffles, Glitching Queed, even Yogi. A lot of people have, have missed this step. Yeah, I remember... Um, talking to milo about this because we did this easter egg when it first released on chronicles and Slayer, rest yeah soul. and we followed every single one of their guides to a t what did we miss yeah. Was the game just broken at this point we were convinced our morale had gone down and we started to lose hope was this game just gonna go to waste i gave the team the decision do you quit this game now and retry not to waste any more time oh man keep trying? no tell me they didn't in hopes that it just randomly starts working it seemed like this was the end of the road for this attack. no tell me you freaking just look for the grenade spot i'm actually about to fucking shoot myself if this works oh, i am so done wait what did we discover while i was gone just just i really hope this works he saw this comment on reddit and now he's cooking it literally is it i don't know why every single tutorial forgot this step for shangri law but there's one step particularly that everyone forgot oh, elaborate. oh I heard something. I heard my something. 
Bro, there it is. Dude, you yeah. are not ready for this, all right? Yeah. Look, I'm going to show you. There was yeah. literally a little ye yellow. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's a step right here for some reason. It's, I, I forgot. It's not the grenade part out of the map on the left, but it's something here. It's like a walkie-talkie. Radio one here you yeah. interact with. Yeah. That radio. Yeah. You have to interact with one radio for this step to work. And I want to point out, by the way, that yeah. not a single guide says you have to do this. Not even This is why I'm remaking my guides in 2023. Because I, listen, when I like going on a tutorial, I like it being to the point. Tell me the exact information that I need in the quickest form possible. None of this nonsense. None of this, hey guys, just... Give me the information and get me the hell out. That is the perfect way a tutorial should be. That is what I'm going to be trying to bring you to you guys. You Even know? one. So if any big YouTuber sees this, please <coughs> add this in no. the description so people don't have to find it. Ranzaru, that. I got you. I won't make it in the description. I will make you a short Shangri-La guide. A random Reddit post yeah. to solve this part of the Easter egg. Yeah. Thank you from the entire zombie community. I got you. <sighs> Anyways, our morale was boosted one more time to push through to the end of this egg. We entered the clips mode and hit the gongs that were correct and got us the dynamite. Yes, Matt sir. then went ahead and shot the new crystal. I love this the Easter egg. Pit and shrunk the big oh, one of the it. coolest steps. Ever. And then you get it. Yeah. Time, the right, closing out this yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why every single Easter egg has had that problem uh, guide for Shangri La. It's specifically for Shang, but it goes to show not many people try four player only Easter egg. Shang is only four players, and it goes to show right there that not Easter many people try it. And for all. Most we people are solo players. I was on 38 minutes. Into wow. And to be honest, we were still a bit down on the morale from Shangri La. Yeah, that's we we needed Shang will take the wind out of you. Moon. It really just made us want to get it over and done with and move on to Black Ops 2. So yeah. we didn't waste any time. All right. We immediately went and did Simon Says. Moon's not hard at all. In the labs. After yeah. that, you technically have to wait till Tunnel 6 is breached. But we had some other sets we could do while we waited. During our yeah. wait for Tunnel 6, we actually did manage to get Gersh's and QEDs from the mystery box, which was good as that was two of the three things we needed to complete this Easter. Yes, sir. Getting Gersh's first on this map is everything. We went back to Area 51 and threw the Gersh's at the plates outside of the map. This allows us to go back to spawn and throw the QEDs near the quick yep, revive machine at the and teleport them yep. to the PC in the same room. We, we then went the and found the wire and after yep. putting in the golden rod, we started talking to the PC. Moon on BO1 looks so ugly. I mean, just look at the screen. What is this, man? To get that so well. great. And at this point, we actually had nothing left to do but wait for Tunnel 6 to be breached. I can't believe how ugly it looks. That was the last excavator to fall. And now this became an issue as Matt decided to decompress the entire spawn room, which made it really hard for me at least because I was oh, the one with the hacker. But yeah, that's a big L. Do not ever decompress the spawn room at moon or else you're throwing. Matt made up for this goober move by getting <laughs> so you know he gets the moon glitch, the moon man glitch. They got it. I mean, I swear on co-op it always happens. Pass for this one. We'll leave the wave gun. You got the wave gun? And then finally, hey, after waiting what felt like forever, Tunnel 6 was finally breached, which meant we could continue nice. on with the Easter egg. We liked to ball around for a bit and shot nice. it with the wave gun and made our way to the pyramid. And Round 17, not too bad. I mean, you have to fill up 100 zombie souls, 25 in each of the corners. So, I mean, not too bad. And after filling up the first canister, we pulled the lever and released Samantha, giving us our death machine. Yeah, we good round. We weren't done yet, as we yep. wanted to go Only all first the way half. the Easter egg. We yep. filled the other canisters one last time and put the golden rod into the pyramid, trans Transferring yes, Rick Hoffman sir. and Samantha's souls. Then and got a QED. We interacted with the Simon Says machine yep. one more time. We threw the QEDs at the pyramid and then threw a gush at the Simon lovely, Says machine. Lovely, lovely. the missiles. Yeah, Moon's not bad on four player because it's it's almost guaranteed that you're going to get all this stuff with four players. You have four people hitting the box. I mean, look how many points they all have, right? So yeah, they're going to get it. Yeah, on VO1. It's honestly impressive that they were able no to do way. this. So insane. Oh, me. And with that, our Black Ops 1 journey was finally over. For BO1, hours pretty and 12 good. minutes into the run, and we could finally move on to the game. Honestly, that's pretty good. And it, considering that you guys spent like a whole hour stuck on that one radio step for Shang, we that's were, really good. Surely it can't go really as bad as Black good. Ops 1, right? Well, going into Black Ops 2, we were definitely ready for a change in games. However, I don't think there was anything that could prepare us for what was ahead. I a lot of BO2 guides are also wrong. So this is where I really want to go back and fix a lot of the BO1 guides, no, a lot like of the BO2 paper, guides. But six hours of non-stop Easter eggs is becoming kind of draining tiring. for us. For the record, that's nearly a whole school day or around 100 on Black Ops 3. We yeah, welcome to my life. <laughs> we starting to feel the effects of this challenge, but now we have to play one of the worst maps in Call of Duty Zombies 
Ease Transit. Yes, now, I think sir! the opinion on Transit in the community has actually shifted in recent years. Going from being the most hated map on everyone's list to some would view it. It shifted because Call of Duty Vanguard simply exists. It having this charm that if you played with some friends just goofing about, it can actually be a lot of fun. But as a little spoiler, after beating this Easter egg, I can conclude that this Easter egg alone made us nearly want to quit the entire challenge. Which is so funny because, like, the speedrunners for BO2 can do these entire eggs in like five minutes. <laughs> Let me explain. You see, the transit easter egg on paper is actually- I love easy. the it's difference. About seven steps, one of them yeah. just being turning on the power. But it's what these steps are that really pushed us. And a right. key factor to what played into that was our team's knowledge. So the two things we definitely- True, and also you can set up really heavily for BO2. You can get bank, you can get fridge guns, right? Like, so if you have those stuff set up before you get into the super easter egg, that's what is going to actually help. The build was the right? jet gun and the nav car table. I was once again pretty much the only person on the team who knew where all of the jet gun pieces well, were I, off by heart. And that's also where you, you fail. And at right? first, getting the jet gun doesn't seem that bad. You just have to go around, pick up five parts. Yeah, it can be annoying, but at the end of the day, it really isn't that bad. I like that they're playing without fog, though. That's pretty cool. Having to do it multiple times over and over again, all I'm going to say... <laughs> Oh, bro, you're speaking my language. This is me trying to do the origins around 100 of Easter egg, for real. Insanity. Doing the same thing. This has got to be the most popular video game line of all time. I really believe it. It was draining, to say the least. And due to the massive map size, it is just a lot of running. And you know, if that was the only buildable you had to get, then it wouldn't be too bad. But no, you also need to build the nav car table in the middle of his random ass corn. So here's the problem. He's doing a four player Easter egg all by himself pretty much for transit. And that sucks. Yeah, because transit and these Victus maps, you need to know them. Field. So like all four players need to know it. You can't sort of carry people like in BO1, BO2 people gotta know. And it, same with BO3. The biggest map all done by pretty much one person, it was not fun. Granted, yep. Peace and Tyler came around by the last few attempts and briefly understood where all of the parts were, but geez, the amount of times I had to do it on my own for us to just fail the attempt and start over was exhausting. But after multiple failed attempts, we finally had everything in place. And if they're doing the super Easter egg, one of them needed the buried nav card here, so maybe they put it in. I'm you know not what? Sure. I even had EMPs. We shot the jet gun under Lovely. the tower and simply- Look at get that thing, bro. You know, what things the? were starting to look up. And I thought maybe this could be the run. Yep. <gasps> no! No, you're not playing on plutonium. The oh. Yep, just another setback. And you know what? That one really hurt. One hour and 40 minutes in, and we were genuinely considering skipping transit for now and maybe coming back later. But I... Please play on plutonium. Please. Steam BO2 is notoriously like one of the worst versions of call of duty black ops 2 ever it's so bad play on plutonium you were playing on bo1 really right didn't want to come back and experience this dog shit of a map so i rejoined the game i powered through we continue to get the explosive i can't tell if he's playing on plutonium because the Kills, timer and we moved on to the final this happened twice by the way after i got emps bro and now this last step is another one that they have to be playing on plutonium if the fog's off that's why I'm... somebody in their game has a bad connection or something i don't really know really pushed us to our limits for the last step he needed to get the EMPs out of the box and with our past experiences we were not looking forward to this considering that we all needed to get them and to make things worse every single time we failed to no you don't only two people need them step we would need to pray to the RNG gods that we would get a max ammo so we could actually attempt it again but it true yeah so okay they're trying to do it the actual legit way that Treyarch intended it which is not fun if you, you only needed two people though. in the end i managed to get the emps and so did peace so then it was just hoping that the rest of our team could get some good luck and get them to but then no nah, man you don't need it we remember that you can actually do this with two people. yes you just have to throw an emp teleport and then immediately exactly it was going to take some goddamn good timing but it wasn't impossible i mean not as impossible as doing it solo three He's two on one throw Let's see it jump jump we did it hey we did got he, it. I did got he the do it? That says, yeah, you did it. Look, we hey, did it. yeah, the lantern oh, turned blue. He did it. Let's go. Let's go. And that right there w. marked the end of transit. W. It took basically around two hours to complete. And That's so sad. I'm sorry. Considering that, like, if, if y'all were more prepared, you could have done this in legit under 10 minutes, like the Super Easter Egg run did. I... 
effing trap for real. It that's, was genuinely that's painful. Hard to hear. Honestly, all I can really hope yeah. for is that after this map, it just gets easier. So yeah, we got Die Rise. You can do it in three minutes. So <laughs> map, moved on to the next map, which was Die Rise. Yeah, this will be interesting. But if you were paying very close attention, you would see that we lost Tyler. He was a trooper, but his True. time had come. His girlfriend snatched him away from us. <laughs> A massive hole in our team, and with the next oh, we girlfriends, players, it man, like we weren't able to continue until he was back. Yes, no, milk 400 plus ping. They already had bad internet issues. Oh no, fam. That's right, boys. We found the fourth, so that Let's meant go, we can milk. continue with the Easter eggs to not waste any more time. Potentially not having a fourth made me get worried that maybe we might not be able to complete this challenge on time. So being able to jump right into the nah, next I believe in milk, man. W. So, you know, we boot into the game, and of course we. How are they down already, fam? Well, it's round one. Started off with plenty of failed attempts. Wait, if if he dies with the stick with fire, we literally have to restart because I'm not hitting the box for it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's freaking bad. His days are behind it. <laughs> Going on to an actual good attempt, we immediately oh, went down man. the elevator in the spawn room and got to work on getting the Sliquifier. I, of course, picked it up because I'm the content creator, and we headed back up to get the trample steam. For this yes, Easter sir. egg again, you'd need to build the nav card table, but in one of our failed attempts, we actually had built it, so it just stuck into this game. We then all went and found... Yeah, we're removing that, by the way. Screw the nav card table. We are adding in a super Easter egg, but we're making it a lot easier to make a do than what the symbol on the elevator, was. And after some timing from everyone, we were able to all stand on it at the same time. And if you're curious, check out Die Rides Remastered. We just checked out some of the new pack bunch camels that we're putting in the map, and I'm telling you, they're way better than whatever this map had. <laughs> Step two. We then got the SVG check out my Twitter if you're interested in Dragon's mouths and then shot them with a stickwifier to make them all slippery. Yes, yes you heard me correctly. Honestly? Yeah, terrible step. It should be one shot. So far, so good. We'd already Not failed 40. this multiple times up to this point, so we kind of already knew what the early... It's 20 shots of the Slickifier per ball. Why? Steps were. It was just trying to Why? get that one good run so we could finish up this map. And yeah. although all was going well, we seemed to struggle with this next step. In short, all you need to do is place a trample steam down on a symbol on the ground and get kills with it. However, I don't know why it was so difficult for some members of the team to understand this. It's a very strange easter egg step because the idea is that you're filling up the tower's energy with the souls of the zombies that get flung towards it but it was just but not happening it's my a weird personal step. theory is that after just playing zombies for hours trying to get easter eggs done with no real thoughts behind what we were actually doing it especially just made our brains go mush and it was just not working that's the other problem as well like not only do you have to know the easter egg steps you have to know the lore in terms of like what you're actually doing or else you'll never get it you uh, know? Ex except for you milk you would you would shit anyways after a while we finally managed Shout to get this step done and milk. we went on to arguably the hardest step of this easter egg if you don't understand it this step being the mahjong tile again you can do this in 10 seconds flat if you're an easter egg speedrunner if you don't know this step good luck <laughs> enjoy looking at every square piece section of die rise the way we're fixing this is that you will be instantly able to pick up any of the mahjong tiles while you're playing so you don't have to because you can't pick them up in this version and you'll be able to see it in the inventory in we this, bought the right? galva knuckles and went up to the tower i personally didn't understand this step so i just left it up to peace the best way that i can explain this step is that there's mahjong tiles around the map that correspond to different directions and yeah. numbers and then you need to match up these mahjong tiles and that basically will give you a code and then you punch it gives you the order of how to hit north east south and west yeah the side of the tower that has the right directions in the right order so at this point die rise is infinitely the worst easter egg ever uh people want me to keep it so i'm keeping it in the remaster but we're adding in a new one uh because i think this easter egg is absolutely stupid and uh, i'm keeping also the mahjong tile set because jimmy zelinski himself told me that i should do that the man who made this map and so i want to honor that but also make people realize that this map can be incredible if done with more love because this map literally is a filler map in terms of the greater arc of the story. We knew two of the placements guaranteed. Yeah. So essentially, we could just do a trial and error for the last two placements. It was a 50-50 chance. We could immediately skip the round as well if in case we got it wrong and we could just get the right combination. <laughs> freaking gets up <laughs> but like surely you'd think this is the run right oh, south sorry. east west and north south east other one yeah this west one. north i feel like once you fail it it just keeps failing i don't know why oh fuck that literally did not work. That's right. Somehow, yeah. the peaceful zombies messed up on a 50 The peaceful zombies. But no worries, right? We can just try again next round. We 
Also, uh, he probably looked at one of the wrong image guides that actually accidentally shows north as a different number or a different direction because that's like the most Google searched one is the incorrect one for some he reason. He died. That's right. We actually failed. Oh on the very no. last step this was incredibly Sad. motivating for us as we really didn't want to go through all that again but for the sake Bruh. of this challenge and for the sake of content we did it anyways so we booted it up and everything went really smoothly we actually got through the easter egg pretty quick meaning we were back ricked off inside is also much easier than max's max's we're getting rid of one step where you have to shoot an upgraded ballistic knife in the Buddha room for some random reason we are switching that to a bo3 free run step so if you like free run and you like shooting targets with the ballistic knife that's way better than just getting an upgraded one and shooting it in the freaking room for no reason. Back at the Mahjong step, but this time, this time was different. While we were completing all the other steps, I was out here watching No Nonsense Guide tutorials on this step to make sure that we 100% had it done this turn. And after making sure we definitely had the four digit code, here it was. We were ready to enter the code and after putting it in, East, South, North, West. Let's go boys. Oh my fucking Let's go! God. Let's go! It's finally over. Almost yes, sir! I was into this challenge and we defined. We're also gonna add a boss fight, but we'll, we won't tell you how. Finally gone off die rise. This officially marked the yes, halfway sir. point in our time limit, and we still had quite a few maps left to go. So, moving on to Mob of the Dead, it finally gave us an opportunity to bring back some time. Mob of the Dead is a fan favorite. Mob of the Dead's Easter egg is literally play the game. Pack, go to pack, punch four times. That's it. Right. And the Easter well, easiest really Easter egg. So easiest Easter fact, egg. The first time I ever did this Easter egg, it was actually in the public lobby and some guy just did it for me. <laughs> to save some time. So, we got to speedrunning, getting this Easter egg done in under 40 minutes. Mob that of the also took Dead, a break during man. This time and Tyler rejoined us. We immediately hey, let's go. Playing, and because everyone was so familiar with how the map played, we had the retreat and we're on the plane in just nine minutes let's we also go spent no time on the bridge on our first go that's so funny how different it is once people know what they're doing the essential time that you're able to save honestly i think if you had speedrunners doing this you could probably push 12 hours i know this is 24 hours okay. but this is so that we can get back and we can just immediately this is get on to refuel in the plane. this is crazy and so the first step in this easter egg is actually just to ride the plane three times so on our third time over we did get pack a punch and got all set up and honestly we were pretty much at the end of the easter egg we picked up the yeah there, there's no box luck with this there's no deterrence it's just play the game Soon it's really not that Citadel, hard where we entered the yeah. numbers and followed the tapes all the way up to the rooftop i know it seems like i'm just skipping past mob of the dead compared to the other no but i mean mob there's no deterrence there's nothing that will slow you down unless you don't know the, the map itself but we genuinely were speed running yeah this it's and so as fast I said, this easter yeah. really isn't that complex it only has about three or four steps either yeah. way we got ourselves set up and went into afterlife to ride the plane one last time if you beat the mob of the dead easter egg before you'll know that the three gangsters turn against weasel and with tyler playing as the weasel this is what happened dude this guy's a lot straight line through his teeth dude. this is the best part of the right. easter egg yeah. Oh. Wait, he got killed by Brutus? <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel bad, but I genuinely don't think you can actually win as Weasel unless the rest of your team is like actual eight year old. But anyway, you can. Okay, so there's been myth busting about this one particular step. I believe there's a certain random gun, like it's either like the S12 shotgun or like just something that is insane against the PvP. And so if you have it, or like the um, the fully upgraded Blundergat that just shoots the bullets, you will instantly wipe people. You can literally win the 1v3, but Anyways, in just doesn't matter. Minutes, we were doesn't matter. Our last Victus map, Let's go. So booting up into Buried, I was actually quite excited to do this Easter egg. I haven't done this Easter egg in years, so to go... I have a feeling this is going to take him a while. Go back and try and complete this it again. This is a hard actually made me pretty exciting. The hope is that this and Origins will boost our morale ready for Black Ops 3. So we nope. <laughs> we started nope. the Easter egg by gathering all of the pieces for the not. guillotine. Prior to actually starting this challenge, we actually made a Google document with all of the steps for all of the Easter eggs, which was nice as it meant everyone can kind of chip in. This goes to show BO2 needs better Easter egg tutorials. I'm sorry, y'all, but like the fact that people have to go to freaking Excel sheets, like what are we talking about and help find all the parts we then got the hit in the box in hopes that we can get the paralyzer and the time bomb and the long shot perma perk with the sniper actually made it really easy to get points
so hitting the box wasn't that bad in this map. But yeah, Milk actually yeah. got it pretty early, which meant we could start filling up the crystal balls around the map. Bank and after filling up so the last crystal ball, the lantern started floating around the map, so we just had to throw a grenade at it, which then let us pick it up. The next step was actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is just get witches kills. And so after enough witches kills, the lantern had been filled, which allowed us to just place it on this random rooftop, which revealed the code so we could do the next steps. Yeah, the code, you just have to hit a certain amount of signs up in the shaft after area. buying the galvan knuckles, we yep. started hitting the signs in the mine in the right order. But this whole next step actually proved to be a bit of a challenge for our team. At first, it was just a simple case of, you know, misreading the code. You know, no worries. I double checked it and, you know, I made sure we had the right code. This step on co-op is really difficult, I think. On solo, it's, it's way easier. But then we failed a few times after this, just following the whisper round. So I went ahead and bought Vulture's Aid, as that allows you to see it through the walls. Yeah, and that made the step a lot Vulture easier. Is and after a few tries, we yeah. managed to get the wisp to go all the way to the guillotine. Lovely. So, for the record, I think this next step is actually one of the coolest steps in all of Call of Duty Zombies. I agree. The, the round infinity step, it's, history. it's so Something cool. just going to round infinity, yeah. showing that the zombies will just never stop coming, even if our characters are gone. In general, I just think it's a really cool step, and no other map has something kind of similar to this. No, no map has. Yeah, that's what I love about these old maps. Like, we were just talking about how in Ascension, the final step of the Easter egg, where you have to spam everything on one white pixel, is not in any other map. Well, same thing with Buried. Round Infinity is not in any other map either, and so it's really cool to see but although this. the step is actually pretty cool to look at the outside, the step itself is actually pretty annoying. So there's four bodies you need to find during- It can be annoying or fast, right? Stage. If and you find the switch- reason, we just could not find right. the fourth body, which seemed yeah. to always have the switch. But after trial and error, we managed to find the last body, and we moved on to the next step. And you know, on the topic of annoying steps, this one is honestly no better. Essentially, what you- This step on solo is literally a nightmare, because it's literal RNG. What you have to do is pull these levers in this maze, in an absolute random order yeah. and if one sparked it means it was in the correct place. The step itself is pretty hard to explain but the annoying part about it is that every time you mess up the code you need to leave the maze and come back in. This then resets the switches and allows you to try it again. It's not exactly- Horrid step. Horrid step. Like one of the coolest steps next to one of the worst steps of all time. be a hard step, but it's best described as tedious. No, after it's 17 awful. minutes of yeah. trial and error, we finally managed to get the correct combination. And that finally meant we were onto the final step, which also happens to be the most infamous step in the buried Easter egg, the sharpshooter step. This step seems to be the one that people struggle with the most. It's, it can be hard if you don't know what you're doing, but if you have four people that have good aim, maybe nowadays this, this step is not that bad because people know how to aim so more. So we all decided on our so spots, I don't know. and mine was at the candy shop. From looking at other people's gameplay, it seems like I had probably one of the harder ones, mainly oh, because yeah. there's no real spot where you can stand where you have a clear view at every single target. Exactly. So it took me a few yeah. tries, but after a while, I finally was able to shoot all of my targets. However, it doesn't really matter if I was the only one who shot all my targets, because the whole team has to shoot all of theirs as well. And now, not to throw them under the bus, but there was one member who might have struggled with this a bit more than the others. And that member was Milk, right? Mainly because he had 400 ping, and, you know, his targets were... Yeah, if you have high ping with this... Go Good luck. Move in so they were a bit harder to Good shoot, luck. but after 15 minutes, this happened. It, this is one of the best Easter strike steps ever as well, because when you finish it, it is so cathartic. You see all the perks pop up, right, sure and you're like, We and received like, all yeah. the perks and finally completed the buried Easter egg. I love it. Going on to our final block Such a unique map, now we have Origins. Yeah, yeah, enjoy this one. We <laughs> to be a as long as we have people doing the soul box. With four people, it's fun. Uh, this is one of those maps where four people, this Easter egg actually can be quite fun with solo. Boxes and the G strikes, no, and this should go by pretty quick. However, as I said, one man needed to be the one to complete the G strikes. You know, I took up the yeah. mantle and I went for the hey, G strikes. Hey, let's go. I was relying on the team to complete all the staff pieces while I went to get the G strikes. So basically, my POV is entirely the Gen 6 church i mean man by the time i got the g-strikes everyone else had already had the upgraded staffs which left just me to get the fire staff i got the fire i mean the fire staff is the easiest to upgrade though so it's not that bad fire staff and immediately went to the crazy place to go ahead and work on the upgrades getting the kills in the crazy place was pretty simple i then went all the way to gen 6 and deciphered the code and thanks to chronorium.com i my low shot the correct mr torches. ruffle and after waffles shooting the fire orb, all we had to do was go back to the crazy place get some more kills and i acquired the upgraded fire staff so since we were in Black Ops 2 Origins, this next step could not have been easier. In case you don't know, there's actually a glitch in Black Ops 2 where if you put the fire staff in the podium, you can just go back to where you pick it up originally. And It does work on BO3 in co-op. You just have to do it differently where everybody activates the staff all at the same time. So 
it, it's possible on BO3, but BO2, it's so much easier. Repick pick it back up, so allowing much you easier. to put it down in the podium three more times to just yeah. complete the step entirely. This was a massive time save, as it meant we didn't have to go into each robot to put the staff down. This staff meant that we could immediately go into the next step, which such is to summon step. the Panzers. Before this step, you need one person to go into the robots to press a button, and then have another player throw a G-Strike at this covered hole to break the- On co-op, this is so easy. On solo, it's such a nightmare, man. Waiting for middle robot feet, like, oh. Seal. And now with me Horrid. being the trooper to go ahead and get the G-Strikes, I I had to be the one to throw them. We did this pretty simply and sent Maxis to go do his thing. Then we had to go ahead and fight all the Panzers. And now, for some reason, I thought the Panzers would be weaker just like they are in the Black Ops 3 version, but no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 not the BO2, boys. These guys will ruin you. Uh, the Black Ops 2 Panzers, they don't mess about. So, yeah, you know what? I, I, I got crap, but, you know, my team, they had it in the bag, and the Panzers, they were no issues. So, yeah, to be completely honest go. with you, before I even had... If you fail that step with four ultimate staffs, you're the problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have four staffs. Next, the peaceful zombies was already cooking, and had already shot down the plane in zombie blood, and got hey. Max's back. I picked him up. So, like, now what we need to do now is, like... Did you shoot the plane last time? Dude, I already killed that bitch. Oh, hey, oh, so now you gotta fist them in the mound, that While I was getting G-Strikes upgraded my staff, the boys were out here filling up all the soul boxes, which meant we already had access to the funder. It's so funny how the most popular zombie maps, they're just like, yeah, we know how to do this already, right? It's mainly like those maps like Transit and Die Rise, where they're like, what is going on? Punch. Allowing us to get the punch kills in the excavation site, which meant we could upgrade our fists. And once we had all picked up the upgraded fists, at this point, we were ready to finish the Easter egg. We all went to the crazy place and put our staffs away and started getting kills and yes, 58 sir. minutes into starting our run we had finally beat the origins easter egg lovely this freaking origins cutscene bro Guys, dude, it wasn't real After dude hours, we were finally <laughs> on to black ops 3 we had nine hours to complete the last five easter eggs realistically this should be in the bag right I, I mean well we haven't really got the time to be sitting around and wondering that we just need to make a move on to shadows of evil in my opinion the best zombie map of all time some of the best atmosphere let's go the weapons and uh, it's easily one of the best zombies maps of all time if like people that disagree just have not given this map enough time this map is truly a masterpiece in so many levels plenty like, of side easter eggs this map has gone down as a timeless classic it in really is yeah. originally going into black ops 3 we said there was going to be no ultra rare gobble gums but after shadows we ended up using the ultra rares i'll be completely honest with you to help with the <laughs> Exhaustion. We also went Shopping into Shadows of Evil with two men that, down, yeah. as it was past Peaceful Zombie's bedtime, so he had to go to sleep. And no, for Milk, peaceful. he just kind of disappeared. He, he just went off into the night and was never seen again. So with me and Tyler thinking we were- Milk was just some random playing Call of Duty at the time. <laughs> have to go into this with two players, Matt rose from the dead to come help the boys with Shadows of Evil. Team Detective was back in business. That's of cool. course, we wanted to actually get the cutscene, so we did use the mod for Shadows of Evil to complete the Easter egg. But don't worry or anything, it didn't give us an advantage or make the Easter egg. Yeah, I did notice they're only playing three players so shadows is the only bo3 egg you need for player and there is a single player mod out there i think it's been taken down from the workshop but maybe it's back up now i'm not sure any easier all it did so, was just let us get to the final step so we could actually see the cut yeah it just lets you do the final step without the cooldowns of having and needing four players which is stupid see. now lucky yeah. for me tyler and matt were both in my easter egg video on shadows hey, so the steps were go. pretty fresh in our minds we immediately got to work on the rituals and just 14 minutes into the shadows of evil shadows is Easter egg is fun, man. It's not a lot of hard steps in this. And we had Pack a Punch open. But before we did the final ritual, I was busy collecting all of the symbols for the egg. Now, I don't know all the fancy tricks, so I just did this the old fashioned way by riding the tram. True. So after doing the final ritual. Yeah, you could be running around in beast mode on top of the roofs nowadays. You could be jumping next to the crates in freaking footlight and uh, what is it? Uh, all these are canals and figured out the symbols like it's ridiculous which we had our eggs and we got to work on getting the souls this is all relatively easy so we had this done pretty quick the same can actually be said for the upgrade process of the sword as all you have to do is go pick up the arc oven from your character's respect and if you have area, the civil you it's the so easy on the floor to summon the magwas you kill yeah. the magwas that spawn in four different locations and then take the egg back to the ghost and you know there's your soul the only problem with this step is that matt struggles quite a bit <laughs> He's not the best, but he admits that and he's proud. Oh, no. I'm dog shit and I'm proud. After interacting <laughs> with a book in Nero's lair to have the flag come down the subway area, we immediately got on the boot. We started with taking it to Nero's lair first, as I'm pretty sure that's the easiest one to do, and it went pretty smoothly, to be fair. We did manage to get it done on our first try. Going on to the next couple flags, we had a plan going into this. Fear in the headlights is like a cheat code for this step. It, it really is, or if you have... Uh, 
uh, what is it, idolize? Oh, I mean, makes an absolute cakewalk. And that was basically yeah. what we did for any the last time stopper for that. I used mine on the second, Matt used his on the third, and I re got it back and used it on the fourth. And after the flag step, we were on to the boss fight. And now, being the world's smartest Call of Duty zombie player, I came into this with a plan. I brought Fatal Contraption in, which is probably one of the best gobble gums for the Shadow Man. We went in and we but why is he not using it? We gave our swords to the keepers, and then the boss fight started. The way this boss fight works is that you interact with the keepers who make the Shadow Man vulnerable, and then you lay into him and interact with the ritual table to trap the Shadow Man. Easy, right? Well, yeah, it, it actually was. I'm not going to play around and be like, oh, did we fail? Because, you know, it, it was just pretty easy. And although we defeated the Shadow Man, this did not mark the end of the- I always love watching Noah's streams here where he, like, spawned a hundred Margwas in here while he's running around. That was insane, man. Easter. Those are We days. still had to destroy the big gate worm. And because we had the mod on, it did make the step a little bit easier than it should have been. The way the mod works is that basically once you shock the rails once, it just keeps them on permanently. So all that meant we had to do was just cool the tram and zap the keepers in the middle. So I got the shock in the keepers and Tyler called the train and with that the easter egg cutscene played. So uh, just future Jake here, the cutscene uh, didn't actually play like I said it did. For what? some reason the second the tram hit the gateworm, the game just crashed so <gasps> we, we counted as a win because we basically- No. Okay, yeah, that does count because literally all they had to do here was shock each of the keepers here and then the cutscene would have played. And honestly, it's a five second cutscene. You're chilling, bro. Basically You're chilling. Right and that yeah. was the end of Shadows of Evil. Yeah, that so is next the up end. on the chopping board was the Rising Drac. And I'm going to be completely honest, we were getting a bit on the sleepy side. But oh, but dude, DE, if you run head drama, you can do it asleep, bro. You know, we real. powered on. And to start with the fatigue, we started to use ultra rare megas from this point on. Let's but go. thankfully, the Rising Drac isn't a hard Easter egg. If you're Not a veteran zombie player, then you're yeah. probably familiar familiar with all of the steps with the Dorizon Drac easter egg because you've probably done it about a million times. We started off Dorizon Drac by filling up the dragons which took us about 8 minutes which for us was actually pretty fast. At that point we had already decided which bows we were all going for and I was left with the wolf bow. And now lucky for me upgrading the wolf bow is one of the easiest bows to upgrade. With all you well so here's the other thing they're only playing 3 players so they're not going to even need to upgrade all 4 I'm pretty sure. Needing to do is just shoot the school down at the rocket test site and getting kills at 3 different locations. So they probably once I did that I waited out. for anti-gravity to kick in and they hey. interacted on this platform platform so I could go ahead and get my arrow. Once I had obtained my bow, I immediately ignored it to go ahead and get the base bow again. I don't know who decided this would be a good first step, but you know. I went over to the teleporter and shot the small light. Yeah, this step does not make sense to me in DE. Why you have to shoot an, a specifically unupgraded bow and arrow shots at all the teleporter prongs. Like, that is how it sends you back in time. Like, it's wild that everybody always thought you had to plant the DG4s in the teleporter. They never used that as a step, and I feel like that would have made way more sense here. And it would have also made it so that you had to get the DG4s at this point in the Easter egg. It would have been better for speedrunning, in my opinion. It's on top of it, meaning we now had to go around and shoot the Wisp. After shooting it four times, it meant we could return back to the teleporter and go back in time. We picked up what we needed and memorized the code so we could enter it at the computer near the death ray. We did end up messing this up the first time, but we had it on the second try. Don't worry, boys. After success... Yeah, see, like, BL3 is going to be a cakewalk. I feel like every egg, maybe apart from Zetsubo, maybe even GK... Fully entering in the code, we moved on to the Simon Says step. We I would love to see BO4 and Cold War in another video though, Renzaru, if you ever decide to do it. I with the one near the death ray, and after completing that, we moved to the one near the rocket test site. And after completing both of these, we were finally ready to cool Dempsey down. After we had landed in the map, we picked up the golden rod and were ready to fill up the keeper. So yes, this is where sir. we experienced our first major issue with this run, which was that for some reason, although no one on our team had started the Firebow quest for- Ah, uh, so, okay, so this happens sometimes, and yeah, that's what I thought. With co-op, you usually, even if you have two players, you usually do have to build all four. So they're going to have to build fire, which, I mean... Is some reason it was asking bad. us to get kills with the fire bow. This yeah. meant I had to go around and complete the fire bow as well, which yeah. was a massive time loss, but you know, we move on boys. We got yeah, the fire bow true. to fill up the keeper and after one hour and 11 minutes, we had filled up all of the souls required and were yes, ready for the sir. boss fight. I think everyone knows how the Derizon Drac boss fight goes at this point. You fight the panzers yeah. at spawn and wait for the wisp to appear on the floor. Then you just plant your- It's so funny because this was so iconic that everybody knows about this fight, right? It's so cool looking back and seeing how that is. Ragnarok's and lay into him with the bows. I did bring the XM-50 free packer punched in which Great was doing weapon. work to the keeper yeah. which allowed Great us to complete weapon. the boss fight in just seven minutes after leaving the boss fight arena we picked up the summoning key and we went go. to the first simon says computer to launch the rockets to the moon and once the cutscene started playing that marked the end of the rising drag that near death experience so <laughs> 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 the level of animations that can pop out during the de cutscene specifically always makes me laugh man 
We got near death, but we ain't reviving Dempsey. <laughs> 18 hours into this challenge, and we were now on to Zetsubo no Shima. Dude, for 18 hours to get to Zetsubo, honestly, that's not bad. That's really good. One of the really more complex good. Easter eggs in Black Ops 3, as there's just a lot that needs to get done. But at the same time, there's not actually that many steps. Let me explain. A lot of Zetsubo's Easter egg is just getting the upgraded KT4. After that, all you need to do is get free cogs, and you're on to the boss fight. It's kind of like Origins in that way, where it's basically the whole quest is just getting the upgraded Wonder Weapon, and then and the rest of the easter egg is like a couple tiny bit of steps. So the main challenge we have throughout this run is actually just upgrading the KT4. Just Going into Zetsubo no Shima, we lost Matt again for this one, so it was just me and Tyler. We started hey. out like a normal game of Zetsubo. Two player Zets is fun though. We got to work it's on the school to get time. the squad and subway and open the map to the bunker so we could get power on. We then got to work on getting the KT4, so you know, we got the plant under the water, killed the zombie by the labs, and on the first spider round, we trapped one and extracted its juices. Yes. Honestly, so juice. far so good. Before I'd even come up with doing this challenge, we'd actually just finished the Zetsubo Monoshima Easter egg were members of the Discord, so we knew exactly what needed to get done. So as the content creator, I of course picked up the KT4 and we got to work on upgrading it. So something that's required for not just upgrading the KT4, but the whole Easter egg itself, is that everyone in the game has to have completed their challenges. This means that Lightning will now strike the challenge podium and when holding out a sheep, I'm glad one zombies map in BO3 made this a thing because it was so weird that they added trials like and then you just never had to use them for maps like Garage and stuff. So. It will actually electrify the shield. I'll go into more detail what this is used for later on. We got set up and we went into the spider boss fight. And now me and Tyler must have went into this with the speedrunner mentality because we had this fight finished within 48 seconds. <laughs> I, I mean, listen though, this is the easiest. Is this even considered a boss fight? Like, I, I think a Panzer sold that is more of a threat than the mama spider in Zetsubo. That's the fastest I've ever beat the spider, so you know, that was a new PB for me, but we picked up the tooth and we left the arena. After the spider boss fight, we also got to work on getting all of the cogs. So I used the Skull and Subway and I mesmerized this poster in the bunker, and around this time we'd also completed our challenges, which meant we had access to the electric shield. This allowed us to get the first cog. Getting this with two players is super easy, as all you have to do is have one of you ride the zipline and the other one zaps it with the shield. So I went on the zipline while Tyler shocked it, and just like that- Yeah, it's always better to go from the bottom. Every time I see, anytime I see a streamer playing like Noah with XQC, I saw Noah setting XQC up at the top of the zipline and I was like, or, or Noah setting XQC up and I was like, bruh. It's over. <laughs> you know? picked up the first cog. The second cog is even easier as all I had to do was pop anywhere but here and that took you to the secret room with the second cog in it. Since we now had access to the electric shield, we also got to work and get the next KT4 upgrade part. After Tyler shocked this cage, I went inside and he sent me down to go ahead and pick up the liquid divinium. And I, I, I love on co-op, you can get stuck down here if they don't decide to pull you up. And if they down, it's legit game over. So if your top friend downs and it's two player, Game over. You literally won't be able to come back up. You're just sitting here for the rest of time. I won't lie, at this point I was so out of it, I nearly forgot to pick it up, but don't worry, I came back to my senses and I picked it up <laughs> and I came back to the surface. We then had the two worst steps of this Easter egg. Getting the AA bullet and the plant for the upgrade. We started on the upgrade. Yeah, it's not that bad, but you have to start it early. They're on, what, for the round KT 23? So Ooh. to do this, I first got the rainbow water, and then I went back to where we got the original plant and started planting a new seed. I watered it with the rainbow water, and luckily we brought round robin into this run, which was really nice. Oh, that will help out way more. Does it meant we didn't have yeah. to wait as long to flip rounds? And after watering the plant three times, we had finally gotten all of the pieces to upgrade the KT4. And now the last step, we had to get the last cog. To do this, we first had to get an AA bullet. Now, I personally hate this step, as for some reason, I just cannot get the AA bullet. Pull out. The AA bullet is hard to get, and then when you use it on the gun, it's just so glitchy, even in 2023. I'm going to have to upload a guide to tell people the exact pixel on the gun to aim at to shoot the gun every time, because it seems like it's just a hard thing to plants. use. It just you know? seems to be the rarest thing in the world for me to get. And it doesn't help that it seems like no one has a definitive way on how to get this every single time. There, there really isn't. It's either spamming blue water and KT4. But we went ahead and we planted a load of plants around the map. Or hoping for the best. There, there, it's, it's a percentage chance that you get it. And kept watering them with blue water and shooting them with a the KT4. And eventually, after enough plants, we finally got the AA bullet. I got it. I was one who was left to shoot down the plane. And after spamming Lovely. every button on my keyboard, we managed to shoot the plane down and pick up one of the most hardest artillery guns to use ever like the activation is so bad on it the cog and with that we were ready for the boss fight i brought near-death experience into this so the boss fight itself was pretty easy as all you have to do is just kill fresh honestly it's better to bring death machines into the boss fight because the big the actual boss is the thrashers 
Eliminating the Thrashers as fast as possible is like the best way. ...and shoot the spores on Takio when they're available. And boys, after a few shots in four minutes, we finally Lovely. beat Takio and finished the Zetsubono Shima Lovely. Easter Two maps left I'm excited for GK. On the timer. Things were looking close. Oh, they've got this, man. So yeah, we had to... Rev is going to be a cakewalk. GK, this will be the one. Make sure we're know? on our game for these next two maps. We basically had two hours on each map to complete the Easter Egg. And now, although that looks like a lot of time, if we failed at any point throughout it's these games, probably it was over. pretty much game over for this yeah. challenge so there, there was a lot failed. on the line here matt rose back from the dead once again to join us for go rod so we had the squad back again go rod's easter egg is probably the most scary out of all of the easter eggs for one step specifically the bomb step but we'll get to that when we get there we started out like any normal game of go rod Krovy, turning on the power and getting all we needed for pack a punch we completed the free groff modules and rode a dragon all the way to pack a punch so we can go ahead and start on our dragon strikes during this time we were also hitting the box of immolation and got lucky enough to get the reagan mark three making the lockdown step a piece of cake now yeah i mean once you get the mark three for this step for this egg it's so easy once you know all the skips and stuff now next up on our list so of things we easy. had to do was get the gauntlet to get all the trophies we shot the egg down and tyler went into the sewers to go shoot the pipe so we can get the trophy that comes out of the toilet we went back to the map and shot the trophy down from the statue and then we also went to where double tap is and shot the window with the shield blast so we can get that trophy as well putting our trophy count currently up to three then i went to go get the trophy that you get for using the dragon strike but i kind of forgot to pick up the dragon strike so yeah i had to go all the way back to pack a bunch but you know we finally got the dragon dragon strike is it's just so useless on this map i feel like it's uh, i love it but like it just should have been the upgraded version you know i got distracted again but you know this one was entirely <laughs> worthless it was actually a valkyrie drone round so i just killed one by this generator and turned that on awesome. as that then allows us to go ahead and get the code cylinder we need so for the next step basically you've got to go around and turn a bunch of valves you got to go on cronorium.com is what you got to do for the next step around the map but you know thank you to cronorium.com again yes, for coming clutch and it guys it made this step super easy yeah, after we got the, the code way. cylinder we returned it back to sophia and entered in chronos as the password i also went back to the supply depot and activated the laser trap so we can get ourselves another trophy. And after going back to pack a punch for the third time, I finally picked up the dragon strike and got the trophy at Supply Depot. This meant the last trophy we needed to get was in the safe, so we started working on the dragon egg. We got to work on completing all the challenges, and I went back to pack a punch to incubate the egg. After waiting a few rounds, we picked up the egg again and went back to spawn to go ahead and get the gauntlet. I then went. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that it's harder to get the gauntlet in this than the Rega Mark III. Like, Rega Mark III, you'll usually get within your first box, I feel like, in Garod. The gauntlet is what takes you the longest. All the way to the bunker, punch the safe, get giving us the, the last trophy, which Yay, also meant that go. after 55 minutes, we could finally start on the challenges. The first challenge was Gersh. This step is... Gersh is so easy, man. One of the more easy challenges. You can do this with the Mark III, you know spam all it all at once. this step is just follow right? Gersh around and shoot him three times. And as long as you're listening out for him, this step shouldn't be too much of a problem. And the regular <laughs> Mark III <laughs> makes this step moving? super easy. Yeah, because... Listen, if you're a speedrunner, you know that you can, as soon as you get him to halt like this, you can instantly keep spamming at the exact points in the dialogue so that he never moves at all. Twice, all in, like, literally before he even left, he was already gone. Oh, yeah. we're done. Okay, we're done. So yeah, after yeah. shooting him three times, he returned back to Sophia, and that was the end of our challenge. We knew at any moment it could be the bomb step, and of course, while I'm just not looking, Tyler presses the button and the bomb step starts. So I rushed over, and we were sweating bullets at this point. You know, this could be the run ender. But luckily, me and Tyler had... Oh, he came right at the perfect time to get his code. So it's supply, the plan. As long as armory, I remember the first tank, three location department and here remember the last three locations okay. we should be in the clear and surprisingly this step on co-op i think is harder than on solo because on solo you can literally just pause the game write it all down but not on co-op man this step went really smoothly a lot of people just record their screens when this step comes right. up but if you're playing two player i'd highly recommend doing this but yeah after that's a good, with the last that's a good bomb, take half challenge. the yeah. third challenge was the mangler step now from personal experience this step is super glitchy and sometimes it'll just randomly stop following you so you need to make sure you're close to him so to help with this step i made sure to bring in undead spam walking this made the step super easy as I could. You can either do that or you can shoot his arm off with an unpack bunch gun, right? But uh, I mean, he's got double tap and an upgraded Mark III. It'll just instantly kill him, unfortunately, at this point. Just focus on guiding him to Sophia. And once he got to Sophia, that was the end of our challenge. The next challenge we had was the Groff module outside the map challenge, which is probably the easiest challenge to complete as all you have to really do is just kill zombies outside the map. Once the Groff module was finished, all we had to do was throw our dragon and collect the package and give it back to Sophia. Super easy challenge. The next challenge we had was the Valkyrie drone challenge. And this one took us two attempts. As yeah, the rest of them will be really easy because you can just use the slow effect of the Mark III 
very. In I the mean, first attempt, it was going pretty smoothly until about a thousand zombies came to come clap my yeah. cheeks. It turned Use out my, my only two teammates yes. went to pack a punch, Let's leaving go. me, the person completing the challenge, to fend off all of the zombies. So, you know, yes, gold star to Matt and Tyler, but of course, this meant that we failed the challenge. But all was good as we managed to bring another gobble gun we brought into this game, Idolize. Idolize, Idolize is exactly Great like in plain sight, except yeah. better, as it makes your entire team invisible for 30 seconds. And with three activations, it meant we had one minute and 30 seconds to guide the drones to Sophia, making this step super easy. And if you're having troubles with this in your own games, then I definitely recommend bringing in this gobble gun. And the final challenge we had to complete was the lockdown challenge. This was another super easy challenge, as it's just like the original lockdown, except with mangler. Yeah, it's so easy as well, because you can just run around with the last mangler until it's done. Now, there is a way to cheese this step yeah. by just training around the last mangler, but we did it the way it was intended. Obviously, if you have the Rega Mark III, this step becomes even easier. So we managed to get the key card and made our way back to Sophia, which then gave us a battery. And then we gave that to Nikolai. And then Nikolai. all that was left was the boss fight. We yes. got ourselves set up and stepped you got death to machines. go to the okay, boss. Okay, he's room. ready. After pressing he's the good. button to release Nikolai, yeah. the first thing we had to do was take care of the dragon. Now, as long as you know how to avoid his attacks, taking care of the dragon is not a hard task. I also got the L4 Siege before we went into this boss fight, which made Ooh. this dragon fight a lot easier. Yeah, the L4 Siege is good for the dragon. I don't know too much though if it's great for Nikolai though. And after completing right? the three stages of the might dragon, not be we had taken it down enough. fairly easily. However, there was this Ooh, rough two downs. One moment that got us spooked, but you know, we had it planned out. Here's what happened. Oh, you're reviving me somehow in the cutscene. Let's go. Oh, the near death is reviving him. That's so funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not overpowered whatsoever. Cheese this fight. Now, if you remember the gobble gun we talked about earlier on, Idolize, yes. if you use it against the Nikolai boss fight, he will literally just stand there and let you lay into him. So yeah. one death machine and some Rega Mark three shots later, and the boss fight had been completed. Yeah, the Nikolai boss fight used to be very difficult, but now that people know all the correct gobble guns to cheese it, it's one of the easiest in BO3. We were finally here. Finally, let's go! We uh, Revs a cakewalk. You got this. this. You beat the final boss fight. You know, a GK. So as long as we didn't fail, surely we had this in the bag, right? We knew that being deprived of sleep and exhausted from playing zombies, we would need some more manpower to help us finish what we had started. It's kind of crazy because in the order that they do it, World at War, BO1 and BO2 are, I think, some of the harder ones to coordinate. But once you get to BO3, like, it's pretty much a cakewalk if you know what you're doing, you know? So boys and lads, I introduce you to... Yeah, G Ripper. I don't even want to say with Gripper. Our bro. Side, we started off revelations like any normal game would go. We immediately got to hit in the box with good weapons and specifically little Arnie's. We also went around picking up parts for the keeper and activating the corruption engines. I shot the gravestones and got to work to locating the random rock in the jump pad so we could have a keeper come and work his voodoo witchcraft magic to turn it into a tape. Again, I don't really know who thought this would be a Jason Wendell. Good step, but either way, <laughs> took it to the next, which allowed us to move on to the next step. When hitting the box, Tyler and Grim got lucky enough to get a little Arnie's, which allowed us to immediately get to work on throwing them in the holes in the Apothecon. And with a few lucky max ammos, this step also took no time to complete and allowed us to get the next tape, which we took to Kino the Totem. After listening to the tape, we were now on to the most infamous step of this Easter egg, the Bone Step. Grim Oof. I mean, fun on solo, fun if you know how to speedrun it got lucky enough to Not get the Apothecon Servant and had already upgraded it yeah. by shooting the rocks in the sky, which meant we have everything we needed to start collecting the bones. We started in Nact and one by one we went around the map collecting the bones. I think anyone who's tried this easter egg before will agree that the hardest bone to collect is the one you get from the wall running section. After yeah, I mean, you can do it from that one window in Noct if you guys have seen my Revelations easter egg speedrun, but other than that, I mean, it's usually hard to get from the DE point. The many shots, however, we collected that bone and went on to finish the rest of them. We returned back to Nactor and where the bones were now lying on the ground and after shooting it twice with the Apothecon Serpent we had collected our final tape. We put hey. this tape in the dig site in Origins then we went on to the next step where you've got to shoot the laser beams around the map at rocks in the sky. This redirects Super lasers easy. towards Nactar and Totem where they Sophia lost the is materialized ah. into the map. After returning to Nactar and Totem to meet up with Sophia she guides us towards the Kino Teleporter which then allows us to complete the next step. However, we must have been so sleep deprived at this point that we got a little bit too attached to Sophia. I am just a man. <laughs> See, that's what I mean, man. You play too much zombies, you become premise, man. You become delusional. So, yeah, once we got to the Kino Teleport, we went to Samantha's room and picked up the Cronorium. And after return, we put it on the lectern and were on to locate in the Apothecon. The lectern? My Minecraft freaking users, bro. When we were completing this easter egg, we were using the help of accelerated ideas. And for this step, they list off locations where they can spawn. Now, when we were playing, we clearly didn't see the bit at the bottom that states, no, these are not all of the possible locations. So we continue. 
continue to look in those locations over and over again until we finally realized that there was more locations than just that. Luckily, it didn't take us too long to actually find the eggs, so we had all four of them filled. The egg locations are horrid. I mean, this one step in Rev can take you a lot of time if you've never played it. And I mean, yeah, to make a guide for this step, it's like Blood of the Dead where there's like 40 freaking bird spawns. Like, how would you even know? You Put know? souls around 50 minutes into the run. Then all that was left was to start hunting for the symbols. I found two relatively fast and Tyler and Grim found theirs not long after, meaning we were finally ready for the boss fight around the 58 minute mark. For us running on pretty much no sleep and having some brain dead gameplay, that wasn't bad at all. We got ready for the mini boss and met up in the projector room. The end was in sight only a few more steps and we had completed the challenge. We went into this mini boss fight a little bit nervous as we knew if we failed here we would no doubt have failed everything we had been working for for the last 22 hours. True, they only have an hour and a half, they can't fail. But I mean this step's so easy, literally just go to the book, read the symbols, kill all the Marguas. I mean if you have the Apothecan and the Thunder Gun specifically, you're chilling. After entering in, I you're immediately went towards the book. Tyler and they have armies, they're chilling. While I read what yeah. all of the symbols were going to be. And the same was done while I was entering in the symbols. And after putting in the right code, the bit that we were most worried for started. Essentially, the way this part works is that there's four stages, and to progress throughout the stages, you need to kill all the markers at spawn. The first stage was the anti-gravity stage. This stage isn't super hard as long as you continue jumping from spotlight to spotlight. Also, during this entire segment, you only get one max ammo, so you need to use it wisely to ensure you don't potentially run out of ammo. As <laughs> they just freaking pick it up! Game, man. I really did. I really did mean to do that. I swear. <laughs> I started sweating bullets when that happened. Either oh, way, we killed the no. Margos and moved on to the next stage, which was the Void stage. Boys. This one went by super fast as we were able to just focus on the Margos, and then we were immediately on to the next stage, which was the Lightning stage. I love also when people see a permanent max ammo, like on this map or Garod, like at the PAP, and they'll just pick it up because they're like, oh, shiny, shiny, shiny power up. <laughs> now, in my opinion, this is without a doubt the hardest stage out of all four of them. The There's Lightning? Up to block yeah. away, which will cause tense moments to happen. Like, Keep in mind, you only have to kill two marguas to progress each of these stages so it's really not that bad this oh i am near dove don't worry oh i'm fucking trapped by a zombie oh. not again game oh my god game please Oh, dude, this is a big clutch. Big clutch. Put it back up. What the actual fog? Yeah, my yeah. asshole was clenched during this part. But after arriving <laughs> him and Tyler, we were onto the final stage, which was the fire one. Again, if you just stay at the top areas of the arena, you're able to just focus fire on the Margwoods, which is what we did, allowing us to get just spam the thunder gun. That's all you got to do. Get out of this whole segment and pick up the. Where's summoner. my thunder gun? We were nearing the end, closer than ever. All we had to do now was throw the summoning key at certain objects around the map, and we were onto the boss fight. Now this step should be simple enough, but something that's still hasn't been patched since launch happened to us after throwing the summoning key at the fountain <sighs> in Baroque, we went through the portal oh they had the ball go outside of the map didn't they and for some reason the summoning key just disappeared so the issue with this is i don't know how this occurs or how to fix it so it occurs whenever you're holding it and you go through the portal sometimes like it, it like if you pick it up too fast as you go through the portal the game sort of glitches out and then sort of loses it um, you have to be so careful with the way that you use the portals with the summoning key. So I've tried going back through the portal to look for the summoning it key won't be and there. nothing was working. Yep. At this point, we started panicking. Unlike the other times that we could- It usually does respawn and reset at a location. I mean, it has a literal mystery box light of its own, like a white light. Considered restarting the run. At this point, we didn't have time to start an entire no, new no, run. No, no, no. So we had no other option just gotta but find to figure it. out how to fix this. So I got to look it online. And apparently, if the summoning key randomly disappears, the only way to fix it is the either down yeah down and there it is i don't know pick up a death machine yeah it's because the game sort of like puts it in your back pocket because the fact that like sometimes if you pick it up it doesn't like finish the animation so it just sort of keeps it on the character luckily tyler had near death on him so he didn't lose yeah. any perks but seriously treyarch why wasn't this ever fixed anyway i think it's because there's a problem already initially with like the three gun glitch. I don't know if you guys have ever had a glitch on BO3 where you lose all your guns and all your points and you end up with the MR6 and you hear the Samantha laugh. That was because there used to be a glitch that you could have like four to, or I think it was like four to five or six weapons. And again, they haven't fixed that because it coincides with another problem that they have to fix. So again, it's a BL3 issue. Anyways, we threw the summoning key at the remaining items, making sure to avoid any portals. And after throwing the summoning key at the crystal ball in Shangri-La, we were finally ready for the boss fight. This was it. The last battle. 
Yes, Everything sir. we had built up towards the last 23 hours of- I mean, it's really not a battle. It's the Shadows of Evil boss fight, my guy. <laughs> to end with this final fight. If we failed here, it would have all been for nothing. We met up back at the Kino teleporter and prepared yes, for the battle sir. of our lifetime. I'm just playing with you, lads. We just brought in Fatal Crash <laughs> and we had this fight over in no time. Man, it really- I just hate that this boss fight is just a nothingness. Like, you look at the arena. I mean, just look at your screen right now. You see this screenshot? If this was a leaked screenshot, you'd be like, Whoa, that's the Revelations boss fight! This is insane! No, sir. But seriously, though, after no, pressing sir. F on the altar to trap the Shadow Man, that was it. It was yep. finally over. As we watched our Primus crew wield the staffs in the Great Wall, we could finally conclude that, yes, you can, in fact, be every Easter egg from World at War to Black Ops 3 in just... Renzaru! Incredible job! Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, go check out the man. I'm liking and subbing if you haven't done it already, boys. Incredible video, for real. And honestly, I would love to see him do BO4, Cold War, but not that other game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see y'all in that next one, baby.